it's uh, it's a little bit special at this moment, six days, seven days before the election, for an event, an event uh, in 20, uh, 28, 27, uh, now to present this uh, this uh, file, I uh, you know, I ex you know exactly what are my uh, my uh, assets. assets. <laughs> you know, everybody knows that uh, because I have a home at uh, Saint Irene, one in Montreal, and you have a lot of in, of uh, of uh, come on, sir, the, the, the information which has been public. Pub Published about this, uh, published about this reality. She always has said that she doesn't li uh, like answering questions in English. That's probably indicative of what we just showed you. Why PQ leader Pauline Marois getting hammered away by the media yet again on a story in relation to her husband and some potential questionable dealings that may have gone on there. But a recent poll shows that though the PQ are ahead. Unusually, it's not the Liberals that are gaining, it's the CAQ. Let's bring in my next guest, Beryl Wasman. He is the editor-in-chief at La Metropolitaine and is with the Institute for Public Affairs, joins us from our QMI studios. Uh, thanks very much for being here, Beryl. Pleasure, Adrian. All right. The CAQ, a lot of our uh, viewers aren't familiar with the Coalition Avenir Quebec. Beryl, who are they and what do they stand for and why did they gain nine points in the polls in a week? Well, Francois Legault, their leader, is, is a very interesting, former PQ minister, served with Marois, self-made uh, millionaire, co-founder of Air Transat, mm -hmm. and um, his position has been, since he created the CAQ, that, look, I'm still a nationalist, he says, but it hasn't worked. So let's get busy getting Quebec back it's on its feet economically and just put the whole independence question aside because we can't survive in the, as an independent state anyway with the current economic troubles. During the debates, he was uh, by far the winner uh, in style, many would say in, in content and substance. Um, problem is he really, uh, I don't, the depth of his team is, is not great. But uh, Francois Legault has done a good job in this campaign. Well, and he's, co he's considered center-right. Okay, so that's an interesting um, situation for him to be in. So he is, is a bit of on the soft nationalist side. Obviously, we've seen, Beryl, that talking about Quebec independence and separatism is not working. Um, that a uh, few Sundays ago, when uh, the former head, of course, of Sun Media and Quebec Corp, Pierre Carl Pelado, announced his candidacy, they may very much made it about that on that fateful Sunday then they continue to talk about it. Maybe they wanted to talk about values charter, but then separatism is the one she's getting nailed on. It's making Quebecers very uncomfortable. Now, nine point lead in one week, or nine point gain, excuse me, in one week for the CAQ. Uh, that's pretty incredible. Now, we're only six days away. How do you see the next few days unfolding? Do they continue to hammer them away mm -hmm. on separatism? CAQ is going to talk about the economy. How is this going to work? Adrian, nobody knows. Anybody who comes on your on your programs and tells you they know to any degree of certainty how the uh, election is going to turn out just doesn't know what they're talking about. Yeah. Uh, this is going to go down to the wire. Uh, the, the only important poll, by the way, unfortunately, media tends to look at the top number. The only important poll is the francophone breakdown because of, there's a tremendous disparity between the population, between rural ridings and urban ridings. Mm -hmm. um, we never knows what's going to pop up. You know, almost a week is a lifetime in politics, as you well know. Of course. Um, and it depends on where, you know, which syllable the stress is put on. Okay. There's a difference between nationalism and talking nationalism, mm -hmm. which for many uh, francophones simply means respect for Quebec, a certain equilibrium between Quebec and the rest of Canada, which many of us think has been reached a long time ago. Uh, mm -hmm. Where they turn off is referendum. The overwhelming majority of even Francophone nationalists don't want a referendum now. That's where Pelletot made a great mistake. There's an expression in French called le beau risque. You mm -hmm. take a great risk in politics. And sometimes it pays off and sometimes it doesn't. Um, it's the referendum talk, not the nationalism talk, that's, that's, uh, that's dropping the PQ numbers almost everywhere. So that'll be interesting to watch. Uh, the PQ doesn't have that many cards left to play. Yeah, well, it, and they've already blamed the Premier of Saskatchewan. They've already blamed on students in Ontario. They've already got blamed a whole list of other things. So what about this latest one, though, Beryl, with respect to Parlene Marois' husband? Now, this is not a new story, 
but it continues to fester. So what's the latest on that? I'll, I'll tell you, and I've, I've had this conversation with so many of, 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 the, of, of the political players, the leading political players. This is not a new story, and this, this, I don't even believe it's a story. The real story was published, the real issue, and it, it's not the, uh, the, the, the Fonds Solidarité investment in Claude Blanchet's latest company. The real ethical issue came in 2009, the ethical story. La Presse did a remarkable job, a full-page article pointing out that when Madame Marois was finance minister, when she was in the government of, of Bernard Landry, mm -hmm. uh, her husband was head of something called the SGF, Société Générale de Financement. It's a state investment agency. And by a change in regulation, he was allowed legally to invest in the stock of public companies that SGF was investing in. And when people ask how did they have the house, it, he made that money. Now, it was legal. Whether it was ethical or moral, of course, is another question. And, of course, it also begged the question, where the hell was Quebec's uh, you know, uh, SEC, our Autorité Marché Financière? And that story was published and just after a couple of days died. That's the central issue when we're talking about ethics. There's no, I don't think there's an implication here of illegality. There's a question of morality. Yeah. So if, the, if it's good enough for the PQ to throw, uh, you know, assassination by insinuation, this isn't even insinuation. This is a husband and wife in positions of power, and the wife and the wife's government made it easy for the husband in his position in the government to make a lot of money. Yeah, that and, and is the central issue. And well, and that's very well, well uh, put, and I appreciate you keeping it down to uh, the simplest of of ways, but it's also about the, the questionable judgment. That's why might this boil down to. But appreciate your thoughts on this. Great chat, Beryl. Uh, thanks a lot for joining me.